untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white life gain landfall deck, which is also relatively budget friendly as we don't need any rare lands in the mana base, which is pretty unique for a standard deck nowadays. And the reason is that we're playing all 16 of the new fetch lands from Streets of New Capenna, which not only search up a basic land, but also gain one life when we sacrifice them, so they can enable landfall synergies twice and they enable our life gain synergies as well. And then we of course need some basic lands to search up, so that there's no room for any other lands in the deck. And one of the big payoffs for playing all these fetch lands besides our landfall synergies is Splendid Reclamation, a 4 mana rare sorcery returning all land cards from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So over the course of the game we'll easily end up with 3 or 4 fetch lands in our graveyard, which we can all return at once with our Splendid Reclamation, enabling a ton of landfall and life gain synergies, so that will often end the game on the spot if we have any sort of board presence. And then looking through the rest of our deck, we start out with our life gain synergies featuring four copies of Moon Dancer, which picks up a plus one plus one counter and lets us scry one. If we were to scry one repeatedly, of course, that is mitigated by the fact that we're shuffling our deck constantly with our fetch lands, but still gets us a little bit of card selection on the next card we would draw. And then we also have four copies of Voice of the Blessed, which picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever we gain life, eventually gaining Flying, Vigilance and Indestructible if we get enough counters on it. And then our Landfall synergies include four copies of Fearless Fledgling, which gains Flying and picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever a land enters battlefield under our control. And then four copies of Lotus Cobra, which can generate mana with the Landfall, so that can lead to some very explosive starts. And then a great combo with Fearless Fledgling is a turn three Kodama of the West tree, giving our modified creatures trample, so any creature with plus one counters will gain trample, and then when a modified creature deals combat damage to a player, get to search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. So Fletchling into Kodama lets us potentially attack with a 2-2 Fletchling, which counts as a modified creature, hit the opponent, get a land, enable landfall again, and we're off to the races. Then we also have the full playset of Inspiring Overseer. This is one of the latest additions in the deck. I've tried a few different flex slots, including Cleric class, Druid class, Azusa's Many Journeys, and even Skewed Swarm, but in the end settled on Inspiring Overseer and have been pretty happy with it so far as a 2-1 flyer that draws a card since our deck can struggle against removal heavy decks, so having a creature that replaces itself is pretty nice, and then it also gains one life to enable our other life gain synergies. And then at 4 mana, another great life game payoff is Lisette, Dean of the Root. We're not playing Valentin, so just playing the green half. And then it's a 4-4 legendary creature, saying whenever we gain life we can pay 1 mana. And if we do, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, and those creatures also gain trample until end of turn. So besides Kodama, another way to give our huge creatures trample when the opponent may try to chum block them instead. And then the best finisher in the deck, besides of course comboing with Splendid Reclamation, is going to be Felidar Retreat, generating either a 2-2 Cat Beast token, or putting a plus one plus one counter and giving all our creatures a Vigilance until end of turn if we enable a Landfall. So that can be awesome with a Splendid Reclamation or any number of fetch lands. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and we've got a fine opening hand. Sequencing is going to be interesting. Probably want to get Moondancer in play first, and then we can uh, gain some life either with Inspiring Overseer or with uh, our Fetch Land. Although we could play the Fetch Land first, so we can curve Moondancer into Overseer, and then Kodama the turn following, and then Green's our only option here. Because there's no way for me to get a counter on Moondancer. And uh, play Kodama, connects and get a an extra land right away. Back up Moon Dancer in case the first one gets removed. Up against a Grixis deck. And then hoping to pick up some more fetch lands. Don't have any landfall cards yet. So those would be nice with Kodama. And Voltage Surge deals with Moon Dancer. Okay, we did pick up a fetch land, so I could go Moon Dancer plus fetch land this turn, which works out. Plays around another Voltage Surge if they draw it next turn, although they might have one in hand. Ray of Enfeeblement instead. All right, minus four, minus four will do it, and then get a planes. 
So some cheap efficient removal from our opponent to kick things off. We'll need a Feldar retreat or a Splendid Reclamation to kind of push us over the top. Cobra lets me double spell. And then Overseer doesn't do a whole lot right now. Although I could wait to play Overseer until we have Lisette in play, so I can potentially pump the team. So that means playing Kodama now. Lisset next turn and then Inspiring Overseer eventually. Infernal Grasp kills Kodama. Alright, hopefully they're out of removal for Lisset now. Ooh, there's a Feldar retreat, that's great. Although I could still play Lisset since we don't have a land to go with uh, Feldar retreat anyways. Don't think I'd be blocking Underdog if it attacked. There's a Feldar Retreat. Now we have options. Could go Inspiring Overseer, pay for Lisette. Although I guess with uh, Lotus Cobra, I can go Feldar Retreat, play Storefront, and then still pay for Lisette. So that's probably the best play. Ooh, ouch, Spell Pierce. Not what I wanted to see. I think I still run out of storefronts. And then I can get the mana before getting the life, so we can pay. And we'll attack for five. Next turn, Overseer, gain a life, draw a card. Trigger Lisette, still pretty powerful. And a Splendid Reclamation currently has three fetch lands. think we can wait one more turn just to present an extra creature, although if our opponent has nothing, they could just be dead to Reclamation and a bunch of Lissat triggers. Fletchling, we'll just pay the one here. And then smash for six. If they have another spell pierce, it's also better not to go for Reclamation. It's gonna be Avalon the Covetous. 2-5. Finding a Meat Hook Massacre, which luckily doesn't kill the sets, but uh, could wipe everything else away. Opponent goes for the Broker's Hideout instead. Up to 6, but they don't have the corresponding basic to search up. Alright, so now the main concern is another Spell Pierce. If I play Feldar Retreats, they might pull the trigger on Spell Pierce there. If I go for Reclamation and they don't have it, we should just win the game. Question is, if I let them untap, how does the game develop? Opponent could play Meat Hook Massacre, which would be annoying. But from the way they've been playing, they don't have removal for list sets. They didn't have a ton of lands, so what else could they have in hand but another Spell Pierce? Alright, never mind. And then we can hit for three. Don't think Lisset wants to trade. And then next turn, Reclamation should get the job done, especially now with a Feldar Retreat in play. Uh -huh, I guess they had another Avalon, makes sense. So they can Massacre for X equals 4, which would kill everything but Lucent and Avalon. Or they could attack with a Goblin first and then Massacre for 5, but then we simply don't block with Lucent. So we can block like so, and then Massacre for 5 is still fine. So hopefully they don't concede yet and we get to Reclamation next turn. Uh -huh, it's going to be a Soul Transfer exiling Lissette, fair enough. And do they still Massacre for two? They do. Alright, so now the game's far from over. Opponent manages to stabilize. But we can play a Fledgling, play Overlook. 
and then next turn go for Reclamation. And make a whole bunch of Felidars here. And this Reclamation is going to be devastating. So I need to dodge another Metook Massacre, basically. Can pay for Spell Pierce now. Soren's fine. Out of my way. Evelyn finds Harvester, Storefront, those are fine. So the Vampire can block Fledgling, but they're gonna have to triple chump here basically. Okay, there's a land for good measure. So, first off, we'll make a couple Felidars. And how many fetch lands are we getting here? Five. Opponent also sacrificed one for us. So, first, we'll make five Felidars. And then we'll pump the team a bunch. Assuming we have enough basic lands left. Possible I should have maybe pumped the team a little bit more to play around another Mito Massacre. I think we'll have just enough basics here. Yep. So we're out of basic lands in the deck. So these creatures will have to do it. And attack face. This opponent will triple chump. And then, yeah, even a Meat Hook Massacre wouldn't save the opponent here. Facing a bunch of 7 7 Felidars. And our opponent just gives up since they know they cannot come back from this. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Sequencing. Probably go for turn to Moon Dancer. I guess if they kill Moon Dancer, we're not too upset since we have a backup. And otherwise, we wouldn't be doing anything next turn. gonna be an eye twitch and shambling gas I think I'll attack first have them double block and then play back a moon dancer and then fetch since I could kill moon dancer anyway with a minus one minus one and they might still do so here and keep eye twitch around and then we want extra white mana so obscura storefront will do We get to scry, another Overseer looks good. In a grindy matchup, we've got two life gain payoffs. We can get going, so seems like a fine pickup. Okay, Jukai Visionary to recur cards from the graveyard. And uh, might just go for Voice of the Blessed Fetch Land over Inspiring Overseer to maximize our life gain triggers. And Overseer also doesn't line up great against Eye Twitch anyways, so we'll do that first. And now I'm probably okay getting a Forest. Get to Scry, Overlook. Isn't terrible when we have Reclamation in hand. Assuming we get to untap with some of our creatures here. Opponent Chumps. Could see Binding the Old Gods take care of Moon Dancer, but then we still have a reasonable turn lined up for next turn with uh, Fetch Land and Overseer. It's going to be Sciences instead, so maybe opponent Light on Lands. And then they can chump with Visionary, pick it back up. Still pretty efficient. 
And then I think we want to fetch first and then play Overseer. And at least we're trying to grow our creatures out of Meat Hook Massacre range, although Blood on the Snow may be a bigger concern given the opponent's snow lands, so I don't want any fetch lands anymore. So yeah, our opponent could jump, activate Visionary, next turn Blood on the Snow, and then we're pretty far behind all of a sudden. Lissette's not bad. So now if they don't have a Blood on the Snow, Lissette would just decimate the opponent next turn. I think I'm okay keeping an extra fetch line now that we have an extra life gain payoff. Because yeah, we could play Lissette, play our fetch land, pay the one, give our team a plus one counter and trample. And that would certainly be game over, so... Cross our fingers for no blood on the snow. Meadook Massacre would be fine. But if our opponent's playing Woodland Chasm, they've got to have blood on the snow in their deck. Alright, Gloom Shrieker, that's fine. Gets back. There is a Meadook Massacre there. We're hoping they just play a bunch of chum blockers, and then next turn Trample will get them out of nowhere. If we ever get to untap with Lissette, and then play a Splendid Reclamation with four fetch lines, that's going to be even more damage, but I think we'll be fine here. So play Lissette. Play Courtyard. Pay the one. Sure, another fetch land. Attack. That's 18 points of trample damage coming in. So opponent will have to chum block. And if they didn't have a blood on the snow last turn, I imagine they don't have one in hand. Visionary thrown under the bus, and an eye twitch to learn. So, I could decide not to kill Eye Twitch if we don't want them to learn, but I think I'm fine if they do. If we just assigned all the damage to Visionary, but then we also miss out on the remaining Trample damage. So it didn't seem worth it. Opponent just gonna discard and draw, desperately digging for that Blood on the Snow, since any lesson's not gonna do it here. And we'll see if they found one. Uh-oh, they're looking at the graveyard. But nope, no blood on the snow, and we managed to get there. So yeah, we can pretty quickly grow our creatures out of Meat Hook Massacre range, but a sweeper like blood on the snow is a very big concern. Alright, we're on the draw, and so we've got a fetch land heavy draw with a fellow that retreats. We're also on the draw ourselves, so... This may end up being a little too slow without any untapped basics. Although it's still a bit of a consideration. Yeah, it's probably one I should ship back. Alright, this is more balanced. So definitely keeping, and we've got a few ways to go about it. We can go Fearless Fledgling into Kodama, which lets us enable landfall a bunch, find an extra land. So maybe then I don't need Lotus Cobra. Or we could keep Lotus Cobra Felder Retreat as a powerful start. Kind of liking the Fledgling Kodama Felder Retreat instead. And then Kodama fetching extra lands enables Retreat. So we don't necessarily need Lotus Cobra. And then I will have to fetch up a land turn 1 so we can curve Fledgling into Kodama. Against the green deck, hopefully they don't have too much removal so we can set that up. Turn to Innkeeper. So if they go for like an Asika's Chariot, that works for me. Lotus Cobra's interesting. I think we still Fledgling. And then hopefully Kodama attack for two and then get an extra land next turn. Old Growth Troll. Opponent may have a one mana instant here or. Maybe a Blizzard Brawl to kill Fledgling. And they're considering it. Innkeeper attacks. 
Okay, time for Kodama. And next turn we'll be able to play Fellow Retreats and enable Landfall twice if we'd like. Hopefully Fledgling and Kodama are still in play. So we can keep those synergies going, but they might have a fight spell here. Fledgling's probably going to be more valuable over Kodama now as a flying threat. Renan 7 can make a reach tree folk, so that could block Fledgling, but we can put two counters on it and uh, still only a 4 4. So not actually a concern. Troll attacks will take 4. And yeah, fell out of retreat into fetch land. And this is gonna be awesome. Could even go for some plus one counters, take out Renan 7, but I wanna go face to enable Kodama. Which uh, I think only works if we deal damage to players. So then goes face, tramples because it's a modified creature thanks to Kodama. Enables landfall again. And I uh, think I'm happy making another Felidar. And then next turn we can start pumping the team. So yeah, the very awesome start of Flunchling into Kodama. Getting to see that in action. Don't expect too much removal for Felidar retreat. Opponent is a fight rigging deck, okay. That could be scary. Although even if they have a fight rigging, they would be one short of getting to 7 power. Maybe something like the enchantment doubling power and toughness could do some damage. Just an Augur of Autumn. If they have a Blizzard Brawl, they could still take out Fledgling with the Tree Folk. But now that we have a Felder retreat going, I'm liking my chances. Can put a bunch of plus one counters on our team which will then also enable Kodama to find more lands, enable landfall. So I'll happily take four. And then best case scenario, draw Splendid Reclamation to really put this game away. Another Lotus Cobra instead. Well, might as well play them out to pick up some plus one counters, but we don't have any use for the extra mana. So we'll fetch, and then time for counters. And then sure, they can block one profitably with the Tree Folk, but the rest will connect, and they may just want to take out Kodama anyways. Our creatures also get Vigilance, so no worries about getting hit on the way back. And we'll just go face. I think we can ignore Renan 7. Could have maybe sent just Kodama at Ren. Ooh, nice. A Boon of Boseju pumping the Tree Folk, so that could now trade for Fearless Fledgling. And they probably should, otherwise the Fledgling is just going to keep on growing once we hit them and enable Kodama. But uh, yeah, that's still 17 damage, so they'll have to jump with Augur of Autumn. Which is not pretty. And then we'll get what looks like four more Kodama triggers. And against the green deck, I think we just put plus one counters on the team, and then there's no way they can catch back up. Got four basics left, just enough. So we ended up drawing Lotus Cobra anyway, but keeping that turn to Fledgling into Kodama certainly paid off here. 
So good to see that in action. And I don't see how Mono Green recovers from this start. They can make another Tree Folk. But uh, yeah, two life. Facing a whole bunch of trampling cats and snakes. It's going to be tough. So drawing a Splendid Reclamation would still enable a Landfall Bunch with our fetch lands, but we are out of basics to search up. So they would be half as effective as normal. Okay, fight rigging. I guess if they have some off-color cards that they can play for free with fight rigging, that could do it, but they also need to get up to 7 power first. So they would need another land. And from what we've seen, I guess Prismatic Bridge is maybe what they're trying to cheat into play with fight rigging, but I guess that also implies some bigger creatures that they can cheat into play. Alright, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We'll need some more life gain or landfall payoffs. Because we can make a lot of mana with Lotus Cobra, but it doesn't necessarily lead anywhere. And I'll fetch for a Plains here. Opponent Red Green, Junt, Targnar. Maybe points towards a Bard class deck. Well, a second Overseer is nice, gives us a way to spend all that extra mana from Lotus Cobra. And hopefully draw into more goodies. Rebuke kills Cobra. So is there any point in me playing a Lotus Cobra here? They'll set up Reclamation somewhat nicely. But wouldn't be able to Cobra plus Overseer. So I'll go for an Overseer instead. Okay, Fledgling's not bad. So we can maybe combine that with Cobra. Arlen also makes sense in a Bard class deck. His opponents playing some Black Legends as well. Targonar attacking probably implies that they have another copy in hand or they just don't want us killing Arlen. So we probably don't want to trade here. And then I could Overseer or I could go Cobra, play Fetchland, play Fletchling, even though we miss out on a few Landfall triggers. And then we want to get white mana. Could also get Overseer in play instead. Which is also reasonable, but next turn I probably want to Reclamation, so having the Fledgling already in play to pick up those counters seems better. So hopefully they don't have too much removal here. We take a bit of a hit, but then next turn Reclamation lets us combo off. Partners is scary. Also, Reach Creature for Fledgling and Overseer. Think I still take it. Okay, so I can Overlook. And then we need to draw something powerful with Overseer. Not sure what it needs to be. Reclamation, Grow Fledgling. Could Reclamation again, but I probably want to Overseer first and then hope to pick up another Life Gain or Landfall payoff before going for Reclamation. So yeah, we can Overseer, hopefully draw something nice, not a Reclamation. Well, I guess we'll just chain these together until we run out of basic lands. Fledgling will force maybe a chum block from the partners. That would be ideal. But don't have any basics left, so it's just a fetch lands coming back from the graveyard that will enable landfall. 
We're also gaining a lot of life, so that's nice. Yeah, any second landfall payoff would have been game, but don't know if the fledgling by itself will get there. Alright, I guess it is good enough for opponents not wanting to wait and see how many basics we have left, but they probably would have had to jump with the partners, and then if they don't have removal for fledgling, it would probably take over on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Up against turn one blight blades, maybe a death touch deck. So flying over with our fledglings is gonna be nice. And then our sequencing is probably gonna be turn two fledgling, turn three cobra, play fetch land, play another fledgling. Okay, Finn on turn two, scary. So we might have to trade off one of the fledglings for blight blade before taking too many poison counters and dying to the alternate wing condition here. Master's Rebuke kills Fledgling, so we're up to 6 poison. At least we can double spell now. Cobra. And then... Could go for Voice of the Blessed over Fledgling. Don't know if it really matters. Next turn I could trade Cobra for Blind Blade, take the damage from Finn, or we could attempt to double block. And then probably lose Voice of the Blessed. Yeah, I kind of like the extra power and toughness, maybe. Although it's a pretty close decision there. Okay, opponent sends the team. So a double block on Finn is reasonable if there's no shenanigans. They might have a backup fin, put us to 8 poison, and then we're in a little bit of trouble, but we still only lose one creature here to Death Touch. Alright, Cobra down. We're at 8 poison, is there a backup fin? There is. And a Blind Blade, uh oh. I think that's the end of the road for us. Too many Death Touch creatures all at once. And yeah, we only have two blockers at most, so the opponent killing Lotus Cobra paid off. So everything kind of went sideways here. And uh don't think we're getting out of this, so yeah. Good start from our opponents. Could have made a slightly different decision last turn, blocking the Blind Blade instead of double blocking Finn. But uh, only really gets punished if they have a second copy. Right, GG's. So that was a quick one against the poison deck. Can block Finn, block a blind blade, still take two poison. And die on the way out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems acceptable. Broker's hideout, get a planes, turn to Moon Dancer, take it from there. Turn one Delver, so an aggressive Delver deck. If we draw basic lands, probably just run out Overseer. Otherwise, Courtyard gets a Plains. The way the deck plays out does make 3 drops a little awkward, since we often just want to play a fetch land and an extra 2 drop on turn 3. And uh, in this case, we cannot play Voice of the Blessed since we need double white, so there can be a little bit of tension there. But overall, I've been relatively happy with Inspiring Overseer after trying out a bunch of different cards in that slot. Serpo and Blue Red, Delver does not transform just yet. And Moon Dancer gets rebuked before it could get out of range. That's too bad. I think we still Voice of the Blast here to try and grow that into a large threat as opposed to going for the more mana efficient Overseer. And then might as well get a little bit extra white mana going.
And then next turn we can grow the Voice of the Blast twice at least with Overseer and another fetch land. The Muse, okay. 2-4 can discount spells. So we will probably fetch first, then play Overseer, unless I guess Overseer could draw into another 2-drop we can play. So we'll keep uh, the forest available. We had more green 2-drops we could play here, but uh, Voice of the Blessed kind of punishes us for the way we tapped our mana. I think I'm still tempted to fetch here just to get this above 4 toughness in case of another rebuke. And then next turn we can play Voice, Overseer and another Courtyard. Some use attacks, we'll take it. And our opponent can cast some big instants or sorceries here. It's gonna be Prismari commands, killing Overseer and looting. That's okay. Close to giving voice flying. Opponent passes. Okay. Another voice. Into Overseer. Opponent could still respond with a burn spell. But there's no way we can play around it. Not our Prismari command. Okay. And then Splendid Reclamation. It's going to be excellent with all these fetch lands we've already played. So we may be able to make an indestructible Voice of the Blast, although bound spells remain a concern. Opponent down to two cards, another Maelstrom Muse. That's okay. And yeah, this poor Delver still hasn't transformed, which means your opponent hasn't drawn any non-creature spells so far. So I'm not too concerned about a bound spell, which it probably would have played by now. And this Splendid Reclamation is going to be a massacre. Six fetch lines. Yep. And our opponent concedes. Going to have a uh, 14 Voice of the Blast, and then the second one gets up to 9 power. So yeah, I think we've got this one covered. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is promising. Gonna hang on to my fetch lands, and then... Turn 2 Cobra, turn 3 Feldar Retreat is my initial plan. If the Cobra gets removed, might get punished for not just running out of fetch land turn 1. Alright, Professor, that's fine. Although, Blue-White could have some decent chance for Feldar Retreat. Okay. So let's see here, let's go with Obscura, so we can fetch for a white land, which is going to be more important. And then hope this Feldar Retreat sticks around, because with uh, two fetch lands and a Reclamation, we can do some significant damage with it. And then Kodama, putting plus one counters on the tokens to then search up more lands could also be pretty fun. So we may run out of basics if we get everything going. Voice of the Blast, okay. Yeah, that seems fine. And then... Sure, I'll go with the Riveteer's Overlook now. And then make a cat. And then we'll be able to play Kodama as well. And hope there's no sweeper, because if there isn't, next turn is going to be brutal. Skyclave Apparition gets rid of Fallout Retreats. Alright, that's too bad. I guess we've had our fun with it. Now what? We can still grow Voice of the Blasts up to some very large sizes. 
But then it's kind of our only threat we've got going on. But we can attack with a team at this point, I guess. I could hang on to Reclamation, to be fair. If we suspect Voice is going to get removed, so we don't necessarily go all in on one creature. And so if we draw another Landfall effect later, we can still make use of it. But right now they could trade for Voice of the Blast. Whereas if I Reclamation now, it would grow up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Hmm. Close call. I think we just send with the team and see how they block. Opponent goes for Kodama. Nope. So Voice of the Blast would still trample for one and get an extra basic regardless, so I can see why they wouldn't want to block it. So your opponent trades instead. Get a 4-4 token, and yeah, still hoping for no sweeper. Right, another apparition. Goes for Voice of the Blast this time. But we can just keep on attacking. And I guess, yeah, opponent's still under too much pressure here, maybe missing a land drop or two. And uh, yeah, without actually popping off, we still got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is acceptable. Get a planes. Turn to fledgling. And then... Got a couple overseers. Do I still want to fledgling onto? I think so, even though we may not have a turn three play. Okay, so get maybe a forest for Lasset, in case we want to run that out. And then if they bounce fledgling here, it doesn't feel too bad as we'll be able to replay it. So hit for three. And yep, there's a Fading Hope. So that worked out. Next turn, Fetch Land Overseer, and then the Overseer will also enable Lissat for us. So yep. Don't mind drawing extra land, so I'll Overseer before playing the Fetch Land out. And get a second white source. So next turn Lissette's most likely. Unless we draw an untapped land, then I could see the advantage of voice into Overseer. Cemetery Illuminator. Alright, actually exiling our land is going to nerf our... Splendid uh, Reclamation slightly. Okay, so can play Lisette. I don't have to play my fetch land now if I don't want to, but it would grow the fledgling, just that I can't pay for Lisette. But with two more Overseers, I don't think that's a major concern. And then we'll hit for five. And then next turn, if I don't draw land, probably gonna go Overseer, pay the one for Lissette, put a counter on the team. So I'm incentivized not to trade Overseer since we're gonna put some counters on it. So now the opponent's instants are also cheaper. Another trickster. Taps down Fledgling. And there's Splendid Reclamation. So that could still be pretty good with three fetch lands, although we can only pay for Lissat once. So maybe I wait one turn on that, and for now stick to the plan of Overseer, pay the one. And attack for eight. Or I could wait and not trade Trickster and Overseer. It's also reasonable. So now Overseer could trade for Illuminator, technically. 
Lissant gets bound. Although it deals 5 to the opponents. So maybe a desperation attack here. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand is promising. I'll keep. Sequencing is gonna be kind of tricky. Might wanna play Moon Dancer first, and then Lotus Cobra on three with a fetch land. Hope we pick up another two drop. Up against Monorad. Hmm. Against Monorad, does that change the equation? Probably wanna get one fetch land out there, and uh, we'll make it the white one. So if they don't remove Moon Dancer, that would be great, as we can maybe curve Cobra plus Overseer. Opponent with Aspirin, so this is kind of the Boros burn deck. So they do have a couple burn spells, play with fire and royal eruption. So those are the main concern. If they don't have one of them, then what's the best payoff here? Probably play Moon Dancer. Next turn, Cobra plus Fetch Land. I guess still doesn't quite play Overseer. If I go Cobra first, then next turn, get up to 4 mana. So yeah, we still cannot quite double spell the way we would like. So maybe the payoff is going for Moon Dancer into Overseer. And then waiting on Cobra. But yeah, we will be under quite a lot of pressure. So if they can add any other threats to the board here, it's gonna hurt. Jetmeter's Garden, I guess, points towards a third caller being there too. Kodama, not bad. So I think we still Overseer to grow Moon Dancer, And then next turn we can maybe put Cobra to use. Another fetch line's nice, don't need another on top. So I don't think we're attacking. Although they could put counter on etching next turn to attack past Moon Dancer, anyways. Sunrise Cavalier, okay. So tough decision here. This is ten damage coming across, putting us to five. What would be my sequencing next turn? Can play a Lotus Cobra, fetch lands, have three mana for Kodama which can then be enabled with Moon Dancer, but we can't quite Reclamation, which is kind of our big finisher here with um, all our fetch lands and Moon Dancer growing. So I don't think we can actually afford to trade Moon Dancer away since it's the only creature that's going to keep picking up counters, but that does feel kind of bad here. Fledgling the draw, that's not bad. So now what? I could go Cobra, fetch land, play Kodama, attack. Still won't be able to play Fletchling afterwards though, but it does put the most power and toughness in play, I think. Yeah, so we'll try that. Felda Retreat would be a great draw. Although we're gonna probably shuffle it away if Moon Dancer wants to attack. Although I don't know if we can afford to. Yeah, probably have to keep Moon Dancer and everyone else back. And then need to survive this one upcoming turn. Protector Shields, that's fine. Okay, so we can block etching without losing Moon Dancer, and then chump the non-trample creature with, I guess, Overseer, and then take four down to two, and then next turn it's time for Felder Retreats shenanigans. Okay, sequencing now is going to be vital. So I can play Fledgling play fetch land, play reclamation, and then play a retreat afterwards. I think that's the safest play here. A 
and Lissette's fine, but it's probably gonna get shuffled here. Reclamation. Gain some more life, so we're out of burn range. Make some huge creatures. And then we still have the option of maybe attacking to enable Kodama. And the our opponent has just seen enough here. Wow. Yeah, this was very close against a great start from the red-white, maybe green aggro deck. But uh, yeah, managed to stabilize just in time. Opponent luckily didn't have any removal to interact here. And we would have been able to play Felidar Retreat, maybe attack, and then with our Kodama triggers make some extra tokens or plus one counters. And then we should have been in a great spot to take over. So yeah, very happy with how the decks performed. The addition of Inspiring Overseer over some of the other flex slots I think has been a good addition overall. And uh, yeah, the win rate, I can put it up on the screen here, at least in the play queue, has been amazing. So it may have what it takes to compete in ranked, but of course against all those removal piles, the various Esper decks, it's probably not going to be our best matchup if they can just keep our few creatures off the board, and they'll have answers for Feldar Retreat as well in the form of Vanishing Verse. So I don't necessarily expect it to perform all that amazingly on ladder if you're facing those decks, but if you're looking for a fun and relatively budget-friendly deck to do your daily quests, I don't think you can do much better than this one. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.